Today we're taking a look at harira, a Moroccan soup that is renowned the world over for its hearty and warming flavours. In Ramadan, this is considered an essential soup throughout much of the Middle East, and it has a history that goes back hundreds of years. This soup is considered to be a complete rounded meal, thanks to the variety of vegetables, legumes and meat it contains. The great thing about this soup is that it's extremely simple to make, and the result is one of the most satisfying soups you'll ever have. Hey everyone, I'm Obi, a home cook who wants to get you cooking authentic and delicious Middle Eastern food at home. If you watched my Wakwaka video from a short while ago, you'll know how much I love this flavour profile. It had this delicious hearty warming flavour, and this soup does as well. This soup contains a combination of small pieces of lamb, chickpeas and lentils that give it a chunky and satisfying texture. Once you squeeze on some lemon juice, this becomes the perfect soup for a cold winter evening. Now, let's jump right in and make it. We'll start off by preparing all the ingredients we'll need for the soup, and we'll begin with soaking the chickpeas. For this recipe, we'll be using 75 grams or 2 and 3 quarter ounces of dried chickpeas. To hydrate them, we'll add them into a large bowl and then completely submerge them in water. Let them soak overnight or for about 12 hours, and they will rehydrate completely to their original size. Here's what my chickpeas looked like after they were done soaking. They've grown to about two and a half times their dry size. If you want to use canned chickpeas instead, you'll need about 190 grams or 6.6 .6 ounces of them. I would recommend using the dried chickpeas over canned because the canned ones can taste very flat and have a preserved flavor. The other legume which will be going into the soup is 75 grams or two and three quarter ounces of green lentils. Not to be confused by their name, these are the ones that have a greenish brownish color. Luckily, there's no need to soak these. All they need is a quick wash under the tap and they're ready to be used. One of the key ingredients in harira is celery. It gives the soup a fresh flavor and is essential for the dish to taste right. In most Moroccan recipes I've seen, the dish calls for celery leaves rather than the stalks. Unfortunately, in some places, celery is sold with the leaves removed, which is a shame as they have a more intense celery flavor. So if you can't get hold of them, you'll have to use a little extra celery in this dish. I started by removing the leaves from the stalks and then mincing them up very finely until I was left with something like this. Now you need a quarter of a cup of chopped celery leaves, and I obviously didn't have that much, so I also chopped up the upper parts of the stalks where the leaves were attached. These I diced into small cubes so that they dissolve into the soup while cooking. All in all, I used about a third of a cup of mixed leaves and stalks for this recipe. In terms of other vegetables, we'll also need to add a medium brown onion to the soup. This one I've peeled and then chopped into a medium dice. You can go smaller if you wanted to dissolve completely into the soup like celery. Then we've got two more herbs to chop up. Firstly, we'll need a quarter of a cup of finely chopped parsley. You'll need to remove the leaves from the larger stalks so that we don't get any chunks of stalks in the final dish. Once you've got a sizable pile, run your knife through it and ensure that you chop up every single leaf into very small pieces. When you're done mincing it, you should have something that looks like this. Set it aside and do the same thing for some coriander. Mince it to about the same size and you also want to end up with a quarter of a cup of this. Both herbs will be added towards the end of the cooking process, so feel free to combine them now. Last thing we'll prepare is the meat that will be going into the soup. This is something that changes your personal preference, and I've opted to use lamb here. I've seen people use beef and even heard about chicken being used, so you can do it with any meat or just leave it out. The meat I have is already cut into fairly small cubes, but for an authentic harira, we want to get it even smaller. The meat should be about the same size as the chickpeas for the perfect texture. To get them to that size, I took each piece of meat and cut it into strips about one centimeter or three eighths of an inch wide. Then I cut those strips into squares with the same width. This left me with fairly small cubes of meat that will be the perfect size for the harira. In total, you need to cut 250 grams or nine ounces of meat this way. Here's what mine looked like. Cooking the harira is a pretty straightforward process. It all starts by placing a pot on the stove on high heat and adding in one tablespoon of butter. When the butter has melted completely, we can add in the meat to the pot and allow it to sear for about two minutes. While this isn't strictly part of the recipe, browning the meat helps add a deeper flavor to the soup. When it's seared for two minutes on the first side, mix the pot and allow the meat to sear again for two more minutes. I did this a few times until the meat was quite browned all over and the bottom of the pot had plenty of browned bits stuck to it. Once the meat was evenly seared, I turned the heat down to medium and added in the diced onion making sure to give the pot a good stir. 
Saute the onion with the meat for about 3 minutes until it has turned a little translucent. Then add in a very small amount of water to help deglaze and dissolve the brown bits from the bottom of the pot. When it has all dissolved and the bottom of the pot is clear, we can start adding the rest of the ingredients. First thing I'll add is 200 grams or 7 ounces of finely diced tomatoes. I'm using canned ones because the fresh ones I experimented with did not pack much flavour. And this is technically a tomato based soup. I then added in the washed lentils, the soaked chickpeas, the chopped celery, two small pieces of cinnamon bark or half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon of ginger powder, half of a teaspoon of black pepper, two teaspoons of salt, and finally one and a half litres or quarts of water. After giving everything a brief stir to ensure it's well combined, bring the pot to a boil on high heat. Once it boils, reduce the heat to medium and cover the pot, allowing it to simmer for 45 minutes. When it's done simmering, it's time to check the ingredients for doneness. Your chickpeas should be soft to the touch and cooked through. Try mashing them with a fork, and if it's easy to do, they're ready. The lentils should also be pretty easy to squish and should have a pasty inside when broken. Then just check the meat, which is easiest to do by eating it as these small pieces don't break easily. Now that the soup is fully cooked, we can add the last few ingredients. I'm adding in 70 grams or 2.5 ounces of tomato paste to the pot. Stir it in very thoroughly until you are sure that all the tomato paste has been dissolved into the soup. Now we'll jump back to the preparation area, where we'll put together a slurry of flour and water which we'll use to thicken the soup. I'm combining 25 grams or 3 tablespoons of all-purpose flour with a quarter of a cup of water. Mix it all together thoroughly until all lumps of flour have been dissolved. This is what yours should look like when done. Pour it into the pot and then start mixing immediately to combine it with the soup. Some people say Harira gets its name from the silky smooth texture of the soup, and that might be true because silk in Arabic is called Harir. This is the stuff that gives it that texture. Keep mixing and let the flour cook for about 2 minutes and you'll notice it will thicken up quite a bit. Once the soup has thickened we can add in the last ingredients, starting with 75 grams or 2 and 3 quarter ounces of vermicelli. Stir it in and then add in the chopped parsley and coriander from earlier. Give the pot a good mix to make sure that everything is well combined. The vermicelli needs to cook for about 10 minutes until it has softened and grown to twice its size. During this time I would recommend stirring the pot every minute to keep the bottom from burning. Here's what mine looked like when the vermicelli was done. If you find that your soup has thickened too much, just stir in some water. All that's left to do is serve your harira. You can decorate it with a few parsley leaves and then serve it with lemon wedges. Before eating, squeeze on a good amount of lemon juice and then your perfect plate of harira is ready to eat. There's a large number of variations on this dish throughout North Africa and the Middle East. Some people make it spicy and some do it vegetarian. One common practice is to eat harira alongside a sweet pastry or with some dates for that perfect sweet and savoury kick. However you change this up, I'm sure you'll have a great tasting soup to eat. I wish you could smell this because the kitchen smells fantastic. Make sure you squeeze a good amount of lemon juice into it just before eating and now it's time for the taste test. First thing you notice is just how warm it all tastes. The combination of cinnamon and ginger just give it that classic winter spice flavour. You also get a lot of savoury elements in the soup from the lamb, celery and tomatoes. In terms of texture, it's really enjoyable to eat. The slurry gave it a silky smooth feel and then the little chunks of lamb, chickpeas and lentils are perfect for giving it some substance. Before I wrap up, I just want to wish you guys a happy new year and hopefully it's a lot better than 2020. Your support for me and this channel has been incredible and I'm very grateful for it. There will be a lot more content coming in the new year and I'll have some big updates for you soon. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like or comment and share it with your friends. And if you make this be sure to send me some photos. As usual the full recipe is in the description box down below and I'll be back next week with another recipe.